Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. So astromech droids are a common sight in almost every Star Wars film, cartoon, comic, and book. They serve as terrific sidekicks and even better merchandise to sell to fans. During the Old Republic, there was Revan's T3M4, and during the Galactic Civil War, there was Harris and Dula's Chopper. And during the New Republic, there's Poe Dameron's BB-8. But perhaps the most iconic astromech droid of them all was Anakin and Luke Skywalker's R2-D2. But did you know that R2-D2 is just one of several models in one of the most famous lines of astromech droids? Today, we'll introduce to you guys the rest of R2's family, Industrial Automaton's R-Series astromech droids. The R-Series began with the P2 series. They were over 2.3 meters high and had three wheeled legs. Because of their size, they were relatively clumsy and could only service larger ships. They were pretty good as maintenance droids and had both a laser cutter and buzzsaw. Before introducing the P2 series, Industrial Automaton ran into some technology infringement lawsuits which delayed the release of their new line of droids. This ultimately would lead to the cancellation of the P2. While the P2 series was being held up in court, Industrial Automaton rushed ahead with the R1 series to make up for some of their losses. To save R&D costs, they retooled the body of their Mark II reactor drone for this new project. The R1 was 1.94 meters tall and had inherited the extremely tough radiation shielding from the Mark II drone. However, it was quite unwieldy and only had one leg to move on. Due to its large size, the R1 wasn't really practical for snub fighters and mainly served on larger ships. It was, however, Industrial Automaton's first astromech droid that was capable of plotting hyperspace jumps. And it also re-established droid speak or binary as a standard language for all future astromechs. The R2 series would become IA's best-selling droid. Roughly half the size of the R1, the R2 could fit aboard military starfighters and greatly improve the survivability of its pilots. It could plot hyperspace jumps, give tech readouts, optimize the ship's performance and energy usage, and could even perform repairs in the middle of combat on the ship's hull. After receiving complaints about the stubborn personality of the R1, Industrial Automaton spent a lot of R&D time creating a new personality matrix for the R2. Characterized as obliging, quick-witted, and sincere, it was recommended that these units would routinely be given memory wipes, or else it would begin to develop a very strong, independent personality. The R2 series was highly customizable, which made it a favorite amongst the more mechanically gifted owners. Its standard array of tools included a holographic recorder projector unit, an arc welder, and fire extinguisher. But more industrious owners have been known to even include jet thrusters on their units. The R3 series was rushed onto the market after the great success of the R2 unit. It featured a clear dome instead of an opaque one which gave its upgraded sensor package and computer brain less interference. The R3 was only sold to government and military agencies because it had extremely high computing power and was able to transfer and process a large amount of data. Although they could be used in snub fighters, the R3 primarily served on large capital ships and battle stations. Its friendly personality matrix made it very easy for the rest of the crew to get along with it, and the Republic purchased over 125 million of these droids. Many of these units would go on to serve the Galactic Empire, and countless innocent droids lost their lives during the terrible attacks on the first and second Death Star. Along with the R3, Industrial Automaton also created the R4 to capitalize on the success of the R2. It was a simpler and cheaper model which was designed to work in hazardous garage environments. It was one of the most rugged droids in the R series and were marketed to outer rim planets. Its computer brain was designed to function with repulsor craft and land speeders rather than for space flight, but with a few modifications, it can make a pretty good starfighter astromech. Because of its toughness, it became a favorite amongst Jedi pilots, and because of its cheap price and low-key civilian design, it was heavily used by the Alliance to restore the Republic. The R5 was introduced as a budget version of the R2 unit but it suffered from serious design flaws, including an extremely depressing personality matrix that just made life terrible. Just imagine Alan Rickman's personality in a droid. I've been talking to the ship's computer. And? It hates me. They are discontinued after a few years of terrible sales, but the R5 unit would continue to be used by both the Empire and Rebel Alliance throughout the Galactic Civil War. Wedge and Tilly seemed to like his R5 unit because its head was just big enough to deflect any lasers heading towards the cockpit of his X-Wing. So Star Wars official canon only recognizes R1 through R5. All of the other droids made after the Battle of Endor are considered legends, but since I really like legends, let's just keep on going, right? After the Battle of Endor and the disastrous release of the R5 series, Industrial Automaton decided to go back to the drawing board and design an astromech that would rival the R2 in success and quality. 
The result of their efforts would be the R6. It wasn't a very innovative design, but improved on every aspect of the old R2 units. Although it never sold as many as the R2 units did, the R6 was extremely successful commercially. The R7 was specifically designed for the New Republic's E-Wing Escort Starfighters. The E-Wing was supposed to replace the X-Wing series, but like the Samsung Galaxy Note 7, it had a severe design flaw which could potentially kill the user or set them on fire. The droid itself, though, was quite impressive. It had an updated computer brain and sensor package and was hardened against EMP attacks. Following the R7 was the R8. It was rumored to be the first astronaut Mech droid to speak basic. But that never happened because I guess it's kind of weird to hear that in a wonderful way. <laughs> It featured all the upgrades the R7 had, but was compatible to a wider range of starfighters. The R9 Astromech was the latest R-series droid that we know of. It had a unique personality matrix which placed self-preservation very high in its routine. Luke Skywalker, Mara Jade, and Jaina Solo would all go on to have their own R9 units. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed meeting R2-D2's extended family. Just remember the next time you walk past a trash can, be respectful, don't kick it because it just might be Industrial Automaton's latest R-Series droid. Anyway guys, thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification button so you won't miss our next episode. And as usual, if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.